The artificial intelligence revolution is here. That might sound like hyperbole. After all, the world looks the same. The revolution didn't arrive with Skynet and robots or with blade running cyborgs. It's been subtle. Autocorrect here, Grammarly suggestions there, an autofill option in Gmail and Google searches, a small chat at the bottom right hand corner of a website and most recently with ChatGPT, an artificial intelligence chatbot that answers questions. If you're imagining Siri or Alexa or even Clippy, rest in peace Clippy, it's so much more than that. ChatGPT can write original essays, compose song lyrics, create stories and generate original lines of code. AI can make up a recipe for an apple cobbler and then a workout plan to help you burn off those calories from that apple cobbler. Last week, I tested it out. I wanted to see if it could answer one of the writing prompts I used to give my middle schoolers, asking whether or not we'll have flying cars. And this was the answer. Pretty good. Definitely original, but not in the voice of a middle schooler. So I asked ChatGPT to write it in the style that a 12 year old could understand. And here's the result. Simpler in vocabulary, syntax, even style. But what about making a claim and backing it up with a fact? I tried it a third time and here was the result. Not perfect, but decent. And here's the thing. This is just the beginning. I asked ChatGPT to create code that would allow a Raspberry Pi to make my Christmas lights blink. It not only created the code, but also the instructions and a disclaimer. But it's not just a single chatbot. This AI revolution is happening all around us, but it often feels invisible. Artificial intelligence fuels our vehicles, navigation systems, and the smart devices in our homes. It's personalizing how we experience social media and the music apps on our smartphones, how we interact with online stores and how we play video games. But it's also quietly shaping our financial institutions and our supply chains and restaurants, our city planning and the way we make products. Some educators are excited about the possibilities. Others are skeptical. Still others are worried and many of us are a mixture of all of the above. But collectively, we are all wrestling with big questions. What is the difference between cheating and using AI? What happens to student voice? What does this mean for information literacy? And what does the future of education look like in a world of AI? It's easy to fall into two different traps and I'm gonna share both of them right now. The first trap is techno-futurism. It's an uncritical embrace of AI to transform education forever. We've already seen bold predictions about how AI is going to destroy the essay or even replace teachers. Techno-futurism asks, what learning task can artificial intelligence replace? and then it replaces those tasks. But I think this misses the point. Simply because technology can replace something doesn't mean it should or even will replace a task. At least not every time. When the pandemic hit a couple years ago, I asked my students to do a show and tell activity about a healthy way that they were handling social isolation. They talked about gardening and cooking and painting pictures and journaling and sewing clothes and playing music and computer coding and doing crossword puzzles. Every one of these things could have been automated by machines. And yet, these activities were lifelines during a global pandemic. On a more academic level, certain low-tech strategies are still valuable for deeper learning. AI can produce an original essay that will score really well on a single rubric, but writing is still necessary as a tool for making meaning. We learn through writing. 
A hand-drawn sketch note helps create the synaptic connections needed to move information from short-term to long-term memory. In other words, we need lo-fi tools in hands-on learning in a high-tech world with smart machines. The second trap is the lock it and block it approach. This approach is dominated by fear. It happens every time a school says, we'll just block that site from our local network. We've already seen people say, let's just make students handwrite all their essays in class from now on. However, AI has the power to help students synthesize information and to clarify misconceptions. And it provides tutorials for skill practice. It's a great way to find new ideas when you're stuck. In other words, AI is a powerful learning tool. The lock it and block it approach relies on constant surveillance to keep the tools outside of schools. Meanwhile, students fail to learn how to use AI wisely. But there is a third way. It's what I call the vintage innovation approach. Vintage innovation is a shift away from the flashy and new and over to the different and better. It's the counterintuitive idea that the best way to prepare students for the future is by empowering them in the present. Our students need to develop the soft skills that machines lack, like collaboration and empathy. In a world of constant change, our students need to be divergent thinkers. In an era of automation, our students might just need lo-fi tools. In a world of artificial intelligence, our students need to think philosophically. In a sea of instant information, our students need to slow down to be critical thinkers and curators. Vintage innovation is not a nostalgic call for the good old days. It's not a reactionary rejection of all things tech-related. Instead, it's a both-and mindset. It's the overlap of the tried and true and the never tried. It's a mashup of the cutting edge and the old school tools. It's the overlap of the timeless in new contexts. Vintage innovation is what happens when engineers use origami to design new spacecraft and robotics. And it's what happens when engineers are studying nature for innovative designs. As a teacher, it's what happens when you do sketchnote videos, mashing up hand-drawn sketches with digital tools or when you blend Socratic seminars with podcasting. It's that service learning project that combines the deeply human hands-on learning with photojournalism. It's the old idea of commonplace books to explore new relevant research. It's a design project that includes duct tape and cardboard and sticky notes and markers, but also digital modeling. With vintage innovation, we can avoid both the techno-futurism trap and the lock it and block it trap by asking, what does it mean for us to use AI wisely? How do we think critically about artificial intelligence as a tool? If you are a teacher, then you're an innovator. You're an experimenter trying new things. You're the architect designing new learning opportunities. In the end, apps change, gadgets break, Technology will grow obsolete, but one thing remains. Teachers always change the world. And artificial intelligence isn't going to change that. If you liked this video, would you consider clicking the like button and maybe subscribing to this channel? Also, I would love for you to share your thoughts on how you think AI is going to transform education and how you think schools should respond to the emergence of AI.